Hi guys, I'm Charlie, a Charlie Book Fanatic. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to talk about all the books I have read during the month of May. I've read eight books and I'm very happy with that. So let's dive straight in and talk about all of these books. The first book I want to talk about is The Walled City by Ryan Grodin. This is a standalone fantasy slash sci-fi novel set in a walled city that's based on the walled city that used to be in Hong Kong. And Ryan Grodin obviously put a lot of research into this and I thought the setting was so interesting. I also loved Ryan Grodin's Wolf by Wolf duology and I wanted to read something else by her so I stumbled upon this and I decided to buy it and read it and honestly I was a bit disappointed by this. It follows three characters called Dai who is a drug trafficker, Jin who is hiding under the radar and trying to find her sister in this walled city and Mai Yi who is Jin's sister and is trapped in this brothel in the within the walled city so these stories intertwine um but i am not a huge fan of how these stories intertwine with each other eventually and just the overall character development in this like i love the characters in the wolf by wolf duology but i didn't feel any emotional connection to any of the characters in this book so the conclusion at the end of it since it is quite a thick book, really didn't do anything for me and I didn't feel anything and I felt like this was a huge waste of time. So I kind of enjoyed my time reading this. I didn't really want to pick it up when I put it down, but overall I think it was a very disappointing read for me, especially in comparison in comparison with Ryan Grodin's later released Wolf by Wolf duology. And my final rating was three stars. Then I read a classic for the month of April and May for the Ostentatious Book Club, which is a classics book club. And that is Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. And it's the first book in the Anne of Green Gables series, which consists of, I believe, seven books. And two of the later books are not about Anne, but about her children. I really didn't think I would like this, but I only picked it up because it was the book of the month for April and May for the Ostentatious Book Club. And I really enjoyed this. This story is the is a bind up sort of of the adventures of Anne who comes to live at Green Gables. She gets adopted by this older brother and sister called Matthew and Marilla who live together. They never got married and they have this farm Green Gables together and they really want a boy who can help out at the farm but then they get this little girl and they grow fond of her. And every single chapter is a new adventure in Anne's life. She grows up throughout this book. I think she arrives as an 8 year old girl or something like that. 11 years old. I don't really know. She's little at least. And she grows up to be I think 16 within this book. And I loved seeing her grow up and her, and her personality developing and becoming different. And seeing all of her friends and all of the people within Avonlea, which is the place where Green Gables lies. This book is obviously set in Canada and I had a really enjoyable time reading this. And I eventually do want to pick up the next book in the series if it ever stumbles upon my way. I'm not going to go out of my way to pick up the next book, but I would sincerely recommend this one. I rated it four stars. Then I read a new release, or an e-arc, which was Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy, who is also the author of Dumplin. And I rated this one 3.5 stars. This is a YA contemporary romance. I thought this was a very unique concept. Ramona is a girl who thinks she, she loves girls, but then figures out she can also fall in love with a childhood guy best friend. And she, and she starts to wonder what her actual sexuality is. And it's basically that but also the family aspect in this Ramona lives in a trailer with her father and her sister who is also pregnant by her boyfriend who also just moved in with them and it's an exploration of family and their mother is still in their life but they see her once a month or something like that and she's not really there anymore she has her own life and them being estranged from her but also obviously Ramona discovering her sexuality and her falling in love with first a girl and eventually a guy and coming to terms with that and I thought that was a very unique 
fun concept to read about. I thought the love interest was really poorly developed. I honestly didn't like him at all. And that kind of took away from the book for me because it was for the most part about Ramona's sexuality and her coming to terms with it and her falling in love with this guy who was a huge part of the book. And that kind of disappointed me. So that's why I only gave it 3.5 stars. But the overall concept of it and the idea behind it, I loved. Then I read another e-arc and that was It's Not Like It's a Secret by Misa Sugiura and I gave this one only 2.5 stars. This is also a YA contemporary romance. It's an interracial gay romance between two girls. Uh, one is Korean American and the other one is Mexican American and they fall in love with each other. But I felt like there was so much racism in this book just between the different ethnic groups and that annoyed me because the author sometimes called uh, sometimes made the characters call each other out on it but it never really improved throughout the book the romance was also a huge insta love story which is just sad because i was really hoping for a cute interracial slow blossoming romance story and that is not what this was these, these were just two girls who saw each other and immediately liked each other and that just didn't feel realistic to me also the main character sana's parents they had a really weird story between them and I just didn't believe a word of it so that kind of pulled me out of the story. I'm not going to spoil it for you but they have a really weird love story like they're not really in love it's it's so weird and I just couldn't believe it. And the last e-arc I read, I read was sort of a collection of short stories but not really it's called queer there and everywhere and it's 22 queer people who change the world so it's little stories about these 22 people and not really an ongoing story i gave it three stars i liked it but i feel like i didn't learn a lot from it some of these people did change the world in some kind of way but a lot of them didn't really do anything they have really unique stories sure but they didn't change the world like the subtitle of this book says so i feel like there would have been a lot of other people to be chosen from and maybe a bit more variety like the word transgender people and gay people but i feel like there could have been even more variety than that next up i read the fourth book in the falling kingdom series which is frozen tights i love the covers for these books there's a fantasy story that follows a, an array of different characters in a fantasy world and they're all different they all live in different kingdoms but all the stories intertwine at some point or another i would compare it to throne of glass mostly but really had to compare it to something I don't really like the series. Same thing with Throne of Glass. I don't really like the series, but I just keep reading it because I I started it and I want to finish it at this point. As just show how much I disliked it, I gave it only two stars. This was my lowest rated book in the entire month. All of the characters in the series I just despise. None of them I like. And I feel like all of them are in love with each other for absolutely no reason at all. I also feel like this story, this book was mostly filler and no real story progression, which is just sad. I don't want to read only filler books. I need some real character development, some real story progression. Just the same with Throne of Glass. Like, honestly, I need, I need more than just cute scenes. I need... Some actual story progression, things happening, action-packed, fast-paced. If that is your thing, this is not the series for you. Then I borrowed a book from the library, which was The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. This is a YA contemporary standalone. I rated it four stars, and I thought this was so cute. This is a story about Andy, who had an actual internship for the summer, but then that fell through because her father, who is a politician, had a scandal, and she applies for a job as a dog walker and that's what she ends up doing for the whole summer. Because the scandal of her doesn't work as much anymore and they start to spend time and actually connect with each other and he sees her friend, she falls in love with a guy called Clark who turns out to be a writer and it's basically the story of her summer and her connecting with her dad, with her family and discovering things about her past, her mother who has passed away and just a story of summer and i love the dog walking aspect in this i've never read about a dog walker before and i loved how different all the dogs were and just how annie spent time with them especially clark clark had a dog and i loved how andy ended up in his house and had to take care of clark's dog throughout the night because clark's dog ate a lot of chocolate and became sick and they had to take care of 
his dog together and that was such a cute scene because that honestly could happen in real life my one down point for this ser for this book would be that there was just too much drama overall for one summer just a lot happened between these friends and with Andy's dad and with Clark and it was just so much drama like my life isn't filled with that much drama so I get that a book needs the drama but I just felt like it was too much and the last book I read during the month of May was The Orphan's Tale by Pam Genov. This is a historical fiction novel about a, about a girl who gets cast out of her family, uh, finds a little baby boy in a train car. He's Jewish. This takes place during the Second World War. She takes him and she ends up in a circus where she meets Estrid, who's the other main character in this book. Estrid is Jewish and she's hiding with the circus, which is the setting of this book. Our other main character joins the circus and Astrid starts to teach her the flying trapeze act and uh, take care of Theo, who's the baby boy. And that is just the premise, the setup of the story. A lot happens within this story. I only rated three stars because I had some problems with this one. Mostly with the characters. There was also a huge case of insta-love that I just didn't get and didn't need to be in the story for me because it was mostly a story about finding family that isn't really your blood connection and then there was this weird insta-love story that went nowhere. I thought the story was entertaining and I had a good time with it and I learned some things about the circus that I didn't know before because I have never heard or read about a circus during the Second World War but I felt like there wasn't a lot of war going on in this, and also there just wasn't a lot happening. It was mostly fly- I felt like I was reading about flying trapeze and drama between Estrid and I forgot her name, the other girl in this book, all the time. And there was- it was just so slow paced, and sometimes I felt like I was just reading absolutely nothing, and I was just bored with the flying trapeze stuff. I just didn't want to read about it anymore, I wanted something to actually happen, something dramatic. And eventually that did happen, but it was a little late in the story and then everything went down. I did love the ending to this book though. I thought it was such a realistic, no happy ending, just realistic ending. And that was what I, what I really wanted from this story. So these were the books I read during the month of May. Let me know down below what books you read during the month of May or if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. I would love to know. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!